The way that the San Antonio River winds from Hildebrand through the park all the way to Anastasia Street is identical to a constellation of stars in the sky. So Yanawana just isn't a terrestrial river, it's a celestial river too. And once a year, these two rivers meet end to end at the Gulf of Mexico at midnight, creating an even longer river, Yanawana, all the way up to the stars. Historic Breckenridge Park is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It is a Texas State Antiquities Landmark. 2021. We learned of a plan to remove these heritage trees, trees that are the nesting habitat for migratory birds, egrets and herons. The plan is to demolition all of the heritage trees on the right side of the river, part of the architectural landscape. Trees along the river known as Yanawana sprayed waters to the indigenous people for thousands of years. I can feel you in my body, I can feel you in my soul. Winter Solstice 2021 at Brackenbridge Park, we gather together to honor the sacred with movement and prayer at Yanawana Spirit Waters. We the people are manifesting as the birds that are now facing displacement from their ancient home. I'm bringing the uh, buffalo into this area so we can give honor to the buffalo and to the yeah. The tall people. Yes, that's what the Apaches and the Comanches call them. The tall people. Because what is above the tree is the sun. And what is above the sun is the creator. He sees everything. Almost all the trees were targeted starting in December and into January with over 50% of vegetation removed. <laughs> It seemed as though no trees were safe from the chainsaws as we stood there and watched in horror. we are told is how life came to this region. The ecology of this region connects us to the, to the creation story itself. How can you attack the ecology and distort the cosmological truth? All of the flora and fauna is what makes the creation story true. So why are you doing this in a park? Why is the habitat being destroyed? What is the cause going to be to cut down each tree? So I went by yesterday, drove by, and this is um, a message from the tree. What have I done to you when, I, when, when I have given you shade, air, and beauty? How am I in your way when you have not taken the responsibility to take care of me? I've been standing here for hundreds of years before you came here. The more I age, the more beautiful and strong I become. Love, honor, and protect me, and I will provide life for you and the generations to come. I'm the executive director for Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation. We've been servicing the San Antonio area for 45 years now, and we are consistently called to assist the wildlife in Brackenridge Park and around the surrounding area. So we are well aware of the plethora of wildlife species that inhabit the park. 
Um, our largest concern obviously is with overcrowding and loss of habitat with removing so many trees from the park at one time. So we would definitely like to see more um, research done into mitigating the effects that this will have on the wildlife, specifically the birds that inhabit the park. Um, to humanely relocate the birds uh, without harming or hurt, hurting or killing any birds. Our intent is just to allow them to find another location that is acceptable to us and to them and is better for them. You know, the reason for removing these trees, the trees that are in this variance request, uh, really have nothing to do with the birds. We arrived to protest a city meeting on January 28, 2022. We were ghosted. the park. This morning we are here in front of the Blue Hole at the headwaters of San Antonio and I'd like to share with you this morning about the creation story of the Payaya people and the creation story is that the water bird, the double crested cormorant, flew into the blue hole and it encountered the blue panther. When it encountered the blue panther, it flew out immediately and from its tail and feathers, uh, droplets of water fell onto the region and that's how life came to be. It's because of that creation story as well that our people understood very well what we had here within the birthplace of San Antonio. Yanawana, San Antonio River. It is a constellation also identical to a constellation in the sky, Eridinus. Same shape, this horseshoe. That is what's critical along this river and that's why we are here to protect these trees. We are the, the guardians of the land. We are the guardians of the waters. We are the guardians of, of the earth. You know, we need to stand up together and protect these trees these trees that give them that give us so much life and what we see is we see a project which is probably really good at repairing walls but I'm not so sure it's good at protecting the environment and I'm not so sure it's good at listening to the public when they say don't cut down the trees. So in order for us to repair this wall properly those trees will, will need to be removed as well. This present what I see is a reduction in canopy that's going to increase the water increase the temperature of the water and in and decrease the oxygen in that area and that's probably the most polluted part of the river we have. So consequently, I think that it's really important to present, pr protect the, the, the canopy as a way of keeping the water cool and, and protecting that. Hi, uh, my name is Frank Arona. I'm the executive director of Society of Native Nations, which is a Native American nonprofit intertribal organization. I'm also the director of uh, American Indian Movement in Central Texas. And I'm a descendant of these lands. And I'm a citizen of these lands. And you know, I look to you not just eye to eye, but spirit to spirit, because this is important. This isn't something light. And I really pray and I hope that our children hold us accountable in the future for what we do and don't do today. As native people, as indigenous people, we have an inherent right, a sovereign right to protect the land that we coexist with, not dominate, coexist with the air, the water, and our environment so that way we can ensure that our next generation has a future to look forward to a healthy sustainable future to look forward to and i know if you're parents we all want our children to not just survive but to thrive 
And in order to do so, we need our environment to do exactly the same, to thrive. That some cultural heritage is, is just not acceptable. And, um, you know, we could say that in the spirit of Robert E. Lee, right? That some things maybe were left, were abandoned, and that they were meant to be abandoned and to never return, which might give the, the waterway um, a different opportunity. And you can wash all that bad history down the, down the river. When you look at that page, it's compelling. It's a very hard thing to say that this is acceptable, particularly when five cases before, maybe eight cases before, we didn't let a guy take out four palm trees and one oak from the San Antonio River at the river walk. And, you know, I, it, it's hard. I mean, it, um, respectful of the hard work that y'all do. And I know that, that, that y'all's heart is in this. Um, but being, being very, very direct and just the information that, the conversation that we shared, the trees are being lopped off because of the timing. Otherwise, we would dig down and pull them out, right? So there are these timing issues that are very important, very important to y'all, but they're indications of something, that something needs to be worked out. And with respect to the community, right, that, that you all brace yourselves because if there are improvements, right, if there are things that are going to make it work, like, for instance, I, I don't want to see that road that, that we turn around and come back. And any, op any opportunity to close that road means you don't want us to turn around. You want us to go right off on Hildebrand, right? I might be right. I might be wrong. But, but the point being that Perhaps there's a few solutions that might make it palatable to the community, palatable to y'all, and make sense to us. And the thing that makes most sense to us, I'll tell you the same thing that this commission sent that other applicant off with, is we, we don't have a plan. And we would hardly ever approve anything that doesn't show us what is, what is being proposed. All we see is that the trees are gone and then later we'll come back. It's, it's not normal. It would set a bad precedent. Not for y'all, but I think it would set a bad precedent for us. You know, we're on TV, right? Our moms are watching. This road that people used to turn around with is gone. This wall, gone. I don't know who did that uh, 3D animation that was on the screen of what was to be done. But that's even more than we've seen about what is proposed. And it's very, um, it should be concerning, right? That, that we would not have seen even a proposal. I write to echo the words of my Brackenridge Park compatriots. Words for trees that have lived two-thirds of the city's tricentennial history. Words for birds with prehistoric reptilian ancestry that predates humanity. Words for waters that brought the first indigenous peoples to this place of springs and caverns. I write to echo words of solidarity with the ways nature spreads sustenance and equilibrium from soil microbes to migrations to seasons and climate. The way nature moderates what man's indifference destroys. I would like to end here, but the words went on. When the motion for denial of plans for death to heritage trees was seconded, the microphone picked up the epithet against Nuestra Tierra Madre, and it reverberated through the devices of virtual listeners. We heard the oath against us, against the breath and blood of this place on our planet, against the egrets 
who give birth to a community that will connect us with the lands and peoples far to our south. Against this river that birthed people's gatherings here. Against our park that was once divided against some of us, that segregated swimming in the pool they planned to recreate once they remove the canopy of oaks that cool the waters. Once they remove nature from the urban, reed, rich white part of the park. The epithet revealed what the plans obscured, what is still alive against us, the buried histories we must come to terms with, the layers that need to be resolved. Actions speak louder than words, and a curse heard virtually across the universe is silent compared to the racket makers in the park this February making noise to deny great egrets and night herons the calm to breed and nest and lay their eggs. Rather, the planners would destroy the park's peace to make time this spring for machines to crunch life out of trees that hold the nesting birds. We ask to address the crimes of theft and segregation of violence against eco-communities, including our own human ones. We pray to restore the waters that have left, left the blue hole parched once again. Chipco connects us across the oceans. Un abrazo para árboles. Embrace our trees, our mutual protection and sustenance. We are progeny of our parents, our planet's love. Forget words now. Let's act like it. Will taking the trees mess with your future? Yes? Yeah. Brackenridge Park.
birds, migratory birds, uh, from Brackenridge, but they were not very successful. Uh, problem is. What was that? Was that an explosive? That was an explosive shot out of, uh, you know, a small firearm by the girl from the USDA. And, uh, you know, they didn't let people know what's going on. There's spectators right next to it. It was very loud. And you know, I don't know if it was bouncing off the buildings, but it did seem like it was louder than usual. And, and there's uh, people in the park. There's people in the park. The there's no warning sign. So the USDA lady is shooting explosives in the park. In the middle of the day, there's some school buses right there. You got kids in the park and you got these park workers banging two by fours. They think they're funny, but look at all these school buses. Conservancy cares because they want an event venue and a way you want it to be beautiful. The people who, um, as I was told, people already reserve Joski's Pavilion for weddings and events. And why wouldn't it be nice they can walk over here to this event venue? Because that's not what it is. That's not, it was never an event venue. You want to restore it? Then that's a water pump. But it was never an event venue. So I'm not sure why SWA was hired. I'm not sure why we spent so much money on a project that the citizens of San Antonio, that the public you say, the desires of the public, are not to have this redesign. That's right. Amen, sister. So why are we still pushing it? Because it makes money. So we're here at Brackenbridge Park, which for us is Yanawana Spirit Waters. Um, and these birds continue to nest here because they continue to tell that story of that this is a sacred site. This is, was a place of a gathering of people. And so the birds um, continue to tell that story, not only because, uh, and also because of the river. The river is the, the life, the death, and the afterlife. And these birds continue to travel through those ancient routes. So we have city park workers here that are disturbing um, the birds trying to nest and there's babies in there. These 
birds that we're speaking of are sacred animals and they're used in a lot of ceremonies by my Pueblo people, by my Comanche people. They were used by the Azteca people. Everybody that came up that river, that Yanawana, to make those sacred journeys to these springs. And someday, are you going to be the one that causes its destruction because your lack of wanting to learn about these things? So these birds that they're deciding to take out because they feel that they aren't sacred or they weren't here, they weren't indigenous species, these people are lying. These birds have always, they lived here before human people came to that place. They took baths in that Yanawana. Who gives us the right to take their life away from them? This mural before you was designed and painted by 10 high school student artists from SACC, San Antonio's premier creative youth development organization. Under the guidance of painter and cartoonist Zeke Benya and teaching artist Cassidy Fritz, the content of the mural was inspired by and based on the White Shaman mural, which documents one creation story of the people of South Texas. The students learned about this creation story thanks to cultural preservationist Gary Perez. The White Shaman mural was created approximately 2,000 years ago. In the center of this mural before you is Mother Water. In the White Shaman mural, as part of the creation story, the moon goddess is decapitated. Her head becomes the full moon that rises. Mother Water can be seen in this mural as a reflection of the full moon. She is looking up into the sky at the full moon, and in that instance, Mother Earth's water breaks, which is represented in this mural as Mother Water's hair, also a symbol for Yanawana. Yanawana in Hokan translates to spirit water and is the original name of our city's river. In the white shaman mural, when the water breaks, the four springs of the balcony's escarpment erupt. These springs are represented in this mural as Mother Water's necklace. These four springs are also represented in our sky as the four stars of Ursa Major, Vegda, Alioth, Mizar, and Alcade. The water that bursts from these springs is represented in the sky as the Lyrid's meteor shower, which takes place in late April of every year. After the springs erupt, the five ancestors emerge from the water. These ancestors are also represented in our skies as planets. These planets are aligned from left to right as Saturn, Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, and Mars, and can be seen as body art on Mother Water's arms in this mural. To your left, three planets are on her right arm. To your right, two planets are on her left arm. This body art is placed this way because it also lines up with how the San Antonio missions are placed along our river. Three of our missions are on the east side of our river, Mission Valero, Mission Concepcion, and Mission San Juan Capistrano. Two of our missions are on the west side of our river, Mission Espada and Mission San Juan. These alignments of the stars and planets represented in the White Shaman mural and this mural before you have happened in our past and will occur again in our future, thus securing our constant connection to the sky and our history. The alignment of the planets represented as Mother Water's body art on her arms will align in our skies roughly every 59 years at different times of the year. If you look to the left side of this mural, you can see the blue hole, the headwaters of Yanawana, and from its water shooting into the sky is a row of constellations. These constellations from left to right are Orion, Iridinus, and the Phoenix. On the morning of July 24, 2025, you can see these constellations and the planets on Mother Water's arms realign in the sky in the same sequences as you see them in this mural. If you direct your attention to the center of this mural once more, you will see a bright orange pendant. This is the deer's heart from the White Shaman mural, represented as Venus. The head of the deer resting in Mother Water's left hand is Venus at the point in this creation story. In 2036, Venus passes through the center of Pleiades representing the heart of the deer. On April 3rd, 
of 2036, all of the planets, the sun and the moon, will be visible in our sky as well. In this mural, CC students, artists sought to illustrate their ongoing relationship with the San Antonio River, the stars and its natural surroundings. The mural references San Antonio's indigenous past, but reminds us that history is cyclical. The river will continuously shape the lives of those in San Antonio. To save our Central Park continues. We fight for the trees and for the birds. If we do nothing, we will have nothing in the end. Here we are here and we're staying too. We've been here, we are here and we're staying too. We've been here and we're staying too. 